Otumba Dayadine. Welcome to the SNC podcast. Thank you for having me. So a few weeks ago, you were in Los Angeles to attend the Grammys. That would have been your what number of times? Um, I believe that would be our 20th year. Wow. The Grammys. Yes. Wow. Why is it important to you that you need to attend the Grammys? Well, for one, um, we used to live in Los Angeles. Um, but then when we lived there, I never really thought about it. It was just one of, you know, one of those programs you, know, you watch on TV. Um, but having moved back to Nigeria, having read mass communication, and having seen the impact that the Grammys has on artists, on producers, or people in the industry, um, the corresponding effect, if you happen to win a Grammy, the multiplier effect, it's, it's tremendous. I mean, from an unknown artist, if you win a Grammy, whether you're a producer or a singer or songwriter, I mean, the sky becomes your limit yeah. and you can go places. Yeah. So the Grammys are, uh, it's like the World Cup of football. It's yeah. the biggest musical event on planet Earth. So if you're a player in music, anywhere way in the world, you do aspire to be at the Grammys, to win a Grammy, to partake in the Grammy. But what do you think about the... Not, it's, not, it's not a recent trend, but what about conversations that are happening now that people think that why should people be aspiring to go to the Grammys, even though they believe that the Grammys isn't going to make any impact in your career and that you can be successful regardless of having a Grammy? Well, um, we've always preached that um, well, if, you, if you're nominated for a Grammy, all well and good. It's great for your career. It's great for your, I mean, to boost your self-confidence and maybe image. You can put all that on your CV. But if you don't win it, it's not, it shouldn't be the be it all and the end all of it. I mean, King Sonia there has been nominated several times. Um, you won't hear him, True. you know, uh, quote unquote, complaining or whining about it. It moves on about his life. Mm -hmm. um, Femi Kuti. But then again, you've had numerous other Nigerians that have won Grammys. We have about 10 Nigerians mm -hmm. that you've probably never heard of that have, won Nigeria, that have won the Grammys in various categories, mm -hmm. songwriters, producers, mm -hmm. whatever, behind the scenes. So um, we always tell our artists, look, it's good to aspire for it because it, it is the most recognized musical event in the world, but it should not be the benchmark of your career. Um, look, there are over 200 million people in Nigeria. Have you sold to 10% of those people? Not to talk of the continent of Africa. Have you reached out to all those people? Have you won all those your fans in Africa? And then talk about the black world in diaspora. Have you? So the Grammys is yes, you should aspire for it. But look at Bob Marley. <laughs> Reggae is played all over the world. Yeah. But they don't complain about whether they win the Grammys or yeah. not. Why do you think that? A lot of Nigerian artists sidestep that process that you just mentioned, as opposed to starting with Nigeria, Africa, you know, other countries before you start saying, oh, I want to win a Grammy. I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, like I said, I won't put the Grammys down. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest musical event to you, I mean. But I see it from a different perspective. I see it as a content provider. It's great content for my platform. Mm -hmm. um, it's great exposure for our artists. Um, we went along with some of our artists, Two Face, um, J1, Late Goldie, just to expose them to see what obtains out there, the level of performance, the level of excellence that you need to attain to be a, you know, a global player. Mm -hmm. um, not just for them to aspire to grand, but to aspire to that level of perfection and that level of excellence. Yeah. Um, but I don't push my artists to say, oh, you must win a Grammy, no. Mm -hmm. um, because the Grammys are not made for Africans. They are not made for African musicians. Mm -hmm. They are made for <laughs> Americans who, whose songs are played on American radio mm -hmm. and whose videos are played on American TV. So the more we understand that and we put that not just in the back of our heads, we let everybody know that that's what the Grammys is about. Are you with me? Yeah. So, so I think it's just a bit of misconstrued or a, some misunderstanding that artists also always think or the general populace thinks. In the, if you don't win the Grammy, you're a nobody. No, that's not it. When you look at foreign investment companies and foreign individuals who are venture capitalists, you have the likes of the Saudi Arabian government, you have SoftBank, you have Peter Thiel, you have Chris Saka. I look at it when it applies to technology and how having foreign investment helps technology companies achieve skill. I always look at it from that perspective. And that just got me thinking about the Nigerian music industry. And I posed this question to Chief Fazer Miracle when I interviewed him, but I don't think I phrased it quite properly. Now, my question was, 
or the question I wanted to ask him and I'm asking you is, do you think local investment is not enough for Nigerian, the Nigerian music industry to achieve scale and growth the way that we would like it to, to be, thus requiring foreign investment to actually play its role? Uh, it's a two-edged sword, okay. if you ask me. Um, when you talk about investment in technology, those that the foreign investors that do so, mm -hmm. they do so to what to expand their reach. Sure. They are not doing it just to help Charity, your country. Of course. Yeah, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg that came here didn't do it just because he wanted to see <laughs> our link bridge. Mm -hmm. He wanted to expand the, his reach. Mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about the music industry. Why would a foreign investor want to come and invest in Nigerian music? Is it because he wants to sell records in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. There must be a reason. But I sincerely think there's enough. There's enough to invest. And you can see it every day. Mm -hmm. But has there been a reciprocal return for the local yeah. investors? Mm -hmm. And I say no. I, for one, can tell you that as an investor, somebody who invested heavily, <laughs> my money, blood, sweat, and tears. I didn't get the risk. But then again, I didn't do it to get the monetary returns. I did it because I felt, wait a minute, this is what obtains where I'm coming from, which was America at the mm -hmm. time. And I felt, wait a minute, if we implement just 50% of what we learned there in Nigeria, we can raise. And I dare say we did. When we came back to Nigeria, you could hardly hear one or two Nigerian songs on radio. Mm -hmm. But if you turn to any radio station now, you can go to any party. If, if it's a 24-hour party, they will play Nigerian songs for 23 hours. You won't hear any Tupac Shakur or Notorious B.I.G. Mm -hmm. And I'm very proud to say I was part of you know, the kickstart of that process. Mm -hmm. So I think there's enough here mm -hmm. locally that, are, that people are ready to invest. But the ones that have done it, <laughs> like okay. Kenny's Music, like Empire Maids, um, you see how what the artists do, uh, and it discourages you. When you take, uh, well, I mean, a young talent, uh, you take him to the studio, you invest money in production, you do a video, you change his, <laughs> his, his clothing, his wardrobe, and <laughs> you change his car, change his life. And after a few months, he blows and he starts to think, well, I don't need the record company. You know, I'm a star now, it's my money. And then after two years, he says, I'm leaving the record company. They are cheating me. You've forgotten that you were nobody before you could. And we see it being repeated time and time again from not just Kenny's to Empire Music, mm -hmm. everybody. So it's something that needs to be addressed. And that's why you're not, you don't see more people investing in that. When it comes to record label signing artists, why don't they have the artist make it a, a requirement that the artist must have his or her lawyer there, so that that in, in some way invalidates the claim that I signed this contract under duress or I did not know what I was signing. Why do some labels do it hush hush and they say, oh, sign our lawyer is here? I'm it, not aware of other labels' mm -hmm. practices. No, 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 yeah, I'm just. But I I'm can tell you when prime yes. time can to manage artists, <laughs> everything was public. Um, <laughs> You bring your lawyer, you read the document. The documents are given to you. Nobody says uh, you must sign. Nobody holds a gun to your head. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, we had a queue, a long queue. We were not even willing to sign that itself. Most came begging and pleading and prostrating. And, and I'm being honest, I'm not, not trying to show up. Most came begging that, please, I will do anything. They even take 60% of my No, 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 we don't need that. The normal standard 20, 30% is OK. But at the end of the day, most of them don't fulfill their ends of the bargain. As you know how the world has turned, people don't buy CDs anymore. Mm -hmm. So the income now comes from shows, yeah. from, from performances. And that's why even abroad you will have, the record companies will sign it, what they call a 360 contract. Yeah. So every money you make, whether it's endorsement, we share it because I am the one I have to invest in. So why am I, how am I going to, in case the record doesn't sell, that's why you will see some artists on their second, third album, they're still living in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. Because the money the record label has invested must be recouped. Whether your song is blowing or not, if I've spent $2 million <laughs> to get you to that level, I must make that $2 million first before you start to, all the limousine rides you. You know, as a lot, you know. So, but is, is this our client? They say, ah, but when you blow, go now. Ah, how come? I have friends that in America that they are on their third album. Look, I go and ask boys to men. 
by the time they did their third album, they were still living in the project. Um, new edition. Mm -hmm. The story is, yeah. so if the record label invests, they must recoup their money before you see a dime. All the flights, the, the concerts, everything. But in our climb, it's not understood that way. People just think, ah, but you know, ah, only a blow gone now, so ah, how come? But why do we seem to understand that outside the country? But Nigeria, we, it seems like we just, we just, we just like jaga jaga in this country. Yeah, because we don't tell the story properly. Mm. We don't tell the story correctly, and that's why we need good journalists mm. that will go out and tell both sides of the story. But when you look now, ah, before these people signed you, you were living in this one room in, in Bariga now. But after they moved you to so so so, you were leaving. It wasn't. Mm. It's like somebody that goes for a job interview, and after three months, they moved you to a new apartment. They gave you, the, and then after six months, you say you want to resign. You have to return all those company properties. You can't keep the company car. You can't continue to live in. The company will not continue to pay for the house. Yeah, you are yeah. no longer. I mean. Now, just to go back to the in foreign investment companies and individuals. The, part of the reason why I ask that question is, do you think that if we had more stories out there by investigating journalists, knowing that there are local investors actually putting money into the Nigerian music industry, that would help not necessarily diminish, but quell the narrative that it's fraud money and drug money that is fueling you know, the success uh, in the Nigerian music industry. Do you think I, that would help? Because you know, we always hear stories that uh, Nigeria, the Nigerian music industry is only being sustained by Oh, I disagree totally. Okay. I, from my interactions, though, when I was heavily into, and I'm still into the, I look. You see, people don't understand the amount of money that can be made in entertainment, mm. and I, I say this because we had friends that were they would come and ask us, ah, you know, any boys, hey, shall I for me now? How, how, how? Because they just couldn't understand that. Ah, you know, you just are riding a home, you're riding a home. They don't believe the amount of money that can be made in entertainment. Look, there are 200 million people in Nigeria. All I want to do is sell to 10% of them. You know how much a CD is? 200 naira, 300 naira. If I sell to 10 million people times 300, do you know how much an average Nigerian artist charges for a show now? 10 million naira. So if I do two shows a month, 20 million naira. People don't know. So when you buy those 10,000 Naira tickets to go and watch any artist of 50,000 Naira, you buy a table. So there is money to be made in entertainment. There are people investing in it. You saw how many shows there were in 30 December. Sure. If there was no money, I mean, corporations would not put, I mean, they would not impair. I mean, you, I don't want to name names, mm -hmm. but you know. Mm -hmm. So there's something in it for them. There's something in it for the artists. But you must hone your craft. You must perfect it. You must continue to be diligent and you must continue to upgrade yeah. and do the right thing. So the investment is there. There's money in this country. No, no, and I, the population is there. The, yeah. I mean, we're willing to, if I hear good music, I will buy. Yeah. So if an artist came to you now, sticking with that, if an artist came to you now and said, I want you to invest in me or sign me to a deal, what exactly would you be looking for? Would you be willing to? Well, I will tell you that now I'm the wiser. As of then, I was doing it because of the passion, wanting to uplift you. I still want to, but my responsibilities outweigh. I have kids I have to put through college. I have a wife that I have to maintain and take care of. Mm -hmm. I want to live a good life. I'm getting older. I don't have that energy that I had 20, 15 years ago to run after and beyond an, art, beyond an artist. And if you forget that artists are also like, they're like babies, they're like children. You have to monitor them, you have to guide them. You can't be seen here, this is where you must go. You can't smoke this, you can't drink this, you can't wear this, you can't. I don't have the energy for that anymore. It's not part of my challenge anymore. Um, I, feel, I feel I have done enough to hand over to the next generation and let them. But I still maintain that there's so much to this industry that we've not even tapped into yet. We're going to go on to the fun random questions. Are you ready? OK, the first question is, the one artist that you'd like to meet at the Grammys, but you haven't had a chance to? It could be an artist or actually a music executive. To be honest with you, and I said it with a, with a lot of, I met just about everybody I wanted to meet, from right. Muhammad Ali to late Nelson Mandela to Michael Jackson, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Akon. 
Nisi Elliot. I, I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah. Life has been good to me. Mm -hmm. I've met presidents. I've met governors. I've interviewed. Um, if you don't have one, that's fine. <laughs> the new, this new generation, I don't know. They rub me a different way. I, How so? I, the craft is not as polished as... I mean, I can't compare myself, my meeting a prince or Michael Jackson with meet, meeting Quavos, I mean, what's that name? I can't... Migos. I mean, yeah? Migos. You see, I can't even... <laughs> I mean, I'm not putting them down. No, 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 I mean, yeah. or a Travis Scott or... I know they are at the top of their game, whatever, or a Drake. Maybe a Drake, I would like to meet Drake, but... It wouldn't be the same for me. I, mm. I owed... People like, you know, having kids in high regards than I do this new generation. I'm sorry, that's the way I feel. Oh, no, yeah, I think a, I so mean, if I get to meet them, fine, but yeah. I wouldn't go all out like I would yeah. meet an Anita Baker or Shade, you know. I think, I think there's definitely a generational divide there, so. <laughs> 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 so that's okay. The second question is, what was the first thing that you bought when you earned one million Naira? To be honest with you, my first one million naira check, I gave most of it away. Wow. To who? I gave some to my neighbors. <laughs> and look, I lived in Ebutemeta at that time. I was living in a one bedroom. And these were people that, in the morning, I would carry my plate to go and buy bread and they were going. And they would say, ah, Uncle T, I'd be working over here. I said, no, no, let's go together. Or in the afternoon, when Kenya, we want to eat Amala. Say, ah, they will go. So I, in my now making it, as a, as a matter of fact, at that time, I don't think that money really, I didn't realize that, wow, I have one million naira, mm. to be sincere. It's now when I think of it, because there was one person, I actually gave 100,000 out of that first one million. I gave somebody that the parent actually came back and said, ah, why did you give... Shekosi was there. I said, no, I just, yeah. that's what my spirit. I do too. And the father thanked me and said, okay, thank you. So I, I gave, gave him most of it. Most okay. of it, not all of it. the second million. Ah, I'm all of it. Okay. Um, all right, third question is, what are three character traits that you believe are important for an artist to have? Number one is passion. Really, you must believe, you must go after what you want, you must know that you are the best songwriter, you are the best performer, you, you must be convinced, you don't need a record label to tell you that. It must be in you, you must go at it with everything. Um, you must have passion. And it applies to anything in life. You must have that drive that, ah, I am good at this thing, say. I just need that window, that somebody to open that door a bit for me, crack it. I get my leg in. Ah, you must have that drive and that passion. That Anikini, he said, I will succeed. Mm. Say, you know, whether I'm given an opportunity, but I know I will be given an opportunity. You must have that drive. You must have that passion. Um, very important, humility. Um, the good book says, those who exalt themselves be humble. Those who humble themselves, no matter how big a star you become eventually, sit somewhere. Let them say, ah, no, 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 that's not your seat. Please come and sit on this high table. Don't go and sit at the other table. They will not say, yeah, I'll burn you. No, Michael Jackson, they are going to go see now. This is where you're supposed to sit. Remain humble. No matter how rich you get, no matter how popular you get, there's nothing you've achieved or you will achieve that somebody hasn't achieved before. Hmm. So remain humble. And lastly, give. Be giving. Give hmm. back. There's a reason God placed you on that pedestal. God gave you that talent. God gave you that drive. God sent people to come and help you open doors. God opened doors for you. God gave you that hit song, gave you that record label, gave you that amount of income. Keep, and I'm not saying those uh, ones that go on social media and say, hey, find <laughs> first 10 people, I'll give 10, 10, you know. Find a way to give that you impact lives that they will, some people, somebody somewhere will tell your story 10 years from now. Ah, my, uh, he was responsible for changing. Mm. Give quietly. That will appease your own spirit that you will know that ah, you will sleep well at night. Yeah. So it's not just, yeah, I'm not saying you shouldn't live well, though, but there's a type of giving that your soul will be at ease, that even when you no longer have that kind of income, people will still, ah, can't quit my hand there one being, ah, I have to tell you why we're going to come. You understand? 
Final question, your favorite song and favorite artist of 2019? Can I say two? Yes, you can. One, um, Old Town Road, Lil Nas X. <laughs> it speaks to me. I'm going to take my horse, just ride down. And you can't know more. I can't, I can't know more. It speaks to life. I mean, you know, I'm going to go out there, mm -hmm. do everything I need to do, and do it to the best of my ability and see what happens. And for 2019, my best song, Timaya, I can't mm. kill myself. <laughs> Allow me to flex <laughs> my motto. No matter how bad the day I'm having, hey, I will eat the best food. I will dress well. My father used to say, on your worst day, wear your best clothes. Yeah, go out. People, nobody wants to help somebody that looks tattered. So put on your best clothes, smile. Somebody will say, ah, do one. Jack and lunch for him. I will flex. I can't kill myself. Tomorrow is another day. Yeah. Two days you can't do anything about. Yesterday and tomorrow. Mm. So why worry? Live today. Be the best. Do the best. Help your fellow man. Till one bad in one slice of bread. Cut it into two. Give somebody. Because that person, you don't know whether that person ate last night. So when you are complaining, ah, somebody didn't eat last night. When you're saying, ah, you know, this food, eh, it's gonna come. Somebody doesn't even have feet. Thank you so much, Asimba Dayadine, for your time. Thank you for having me.